In this section, uh, we're now going to learn how we can actually systematically name and draw structural formulae of different hydrocarbons. This includes alkanes and alkenes, and then this can be further extended to looking at alkynes. This is going to directly tie into these two science understandings. Firstly, hydrocarbons are named systematically to provide unambiguous identification. The structural formula of a hydrocarbon can be deduced from its systematic name. So from here, we need to know how to identify, to name systematically, as well as know how to draw the structural formulae of hydrocarbons. The reason why we look at this is because there are essentially an infinite variety of different organic compounds that can exist and we can manufacture essentially an unlimited amount. To determine that two compounds are in actual fact different, uh, we use uh, a system devised by the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, or IUPAC, and they've helped develop uh, a series of rules to help us with the naming process. This then allows us to identify whether two compounds may in actual fact be different or they could even be the same. And essentially, if we can name it in the same way, then it would represent the same compound. And to do this, uh, we end up using the names of the alkanes as our basis. We're going to learn how we can name alkanes and then from there it will uh, be extended to look at how we can name for alkenes and other types of organic compounds, including alcohols and carboxylic acids. The name of a compound usually consists of three parts. Uh, it can consist of any substituents. So this is anything that is branching from the main carbon chain or any what we call functional groups uh, that are also attached to the main carbon chain. The second part of the name then refers to the length of the carbon chain itself. And the third part then uh, has the chemical ending which denotes what type of organic compound it is. Hydrocarbons are named uh, first by determining the main carbon chain, and this is often what we call the parent chain. The parent chain represents the longest chain of carbon atoms that are bonded from one to another. If the longest chain is only made up of one carbon atom, then the parent name contains this meth prefix. If we're talking about alkanes, its name would be methane or methane. Uh, two carbons, it's got an eth prefix, again for alkanes that'll be ethane or ethane. Uh, going on to three is prop, four bute, five pent, six hex, uh, hept, oct, non and dec. We won't need to look at anything beyond up to eight carbon atoms, but I've just provided you with a couple more uh, for reference. So going from the main chain or what we call the parent chain, we may end up containing other groups that are branching from this parent chain. And we generally refer to these as alkyl groups. They're called alkyl groups because they are somewhat derived from alkanes that are bonded from the parent chain. And the naming itself is based on the length of the carbon chain itself. To look at this, we've got uh, the structural formula of this hydrocarbon here. We can see that there are four carbon atoms in the longest chain or the parent chain. So this is going to be a butane. But what we can see here is that there is this group here. This is a methyl group. It's branching from this parent chain itself. It's made up of one carbon atom, so it's called a methyl group. And it's represented by this CH3 at the bottom as well. We can see here how the names are determined. So uh, a hydrocarbon made up of one carbon atom uh, could be something like methane, CH4. Uh, a group that's bonding from the main chain um, that's made up of one carbon atom is called a methyl group. So methane can form a methyl group. With uh, two carbon atoms, we've got uh, an alkane called ethane or ethane. And if it was an alkyl group, so in other words, it was branching off of the uh, parent chain, uh, it would be called an ethyl group. These are the following rules uh, that we're going to use to learn how to systematically name. And another way of saying this is systematic nomenclature. We're going to then extend these rules to compounds that contain other groups within them. So not just carbon to carbon bonds and carbon to hydrogen bonds. 
First rule is to determine the longest carbon chain and to name it. The second rule is to identify any of those branching groups or alkyl groups. The third rule is to then number the carbons in the longest chain so that these groups are numbered as low as possible. We'll start off with those three rules first and let's look at an example. We need to know how to systematically name for this particular compound. So the first step, determine the longest carbon chain and name it. If we just look at this carbon chain going from left to right, it's made up of five uh, carbons long. Um, so this will be given a pent prefix to represent that there are five carbon atoms. Because it's an alkane, it's going to be called a pentane. So that involves these five carbon atoms here. The second rule, identify alkyl groups. I can see that I have this CH3 group here that's not part of the parent chain. And this is called a methyl group. So we can build on this um, name in step one and now call it a methyl propane. You might write this as two separate words, but they are commonly represented as one word. The third rule is to then number the carbons in, longest, in the longest chain so that the alkyl groups are numbered as low as possible. So there are two ways we can do this. We can number the carbons one, two, three, four, five, or we can number in the opposite direction, so one, two, three, four, five. Uh, in this case, we're going to number it from left to right because it will give this uh, methyl group the lowest possible number. And we need to represent where this methyl group is positioned. So we're going to go ahead and number these carbons. So this tells me a methyl group is on the second carbon in this pentane. And so in terms of naming it, we uh, assign it 2 dash methyl. Propane. We use hyphens to separate between numbers and letters. The fourth rule, uh, if we were to have multiple alkyl groups and they were the same alkyl groups, we now need to indicate that there are um, multiple groups using these prefixes. If we, for example, had two methyl groups, then we would have to say it is a dimethyl. Uh, three of them, it would be a tri. 4 is tetra, 5 is penta. We could go beyond that, but rarely do we ever see anything with more than that. Our second example, we've got a very similar looking compound here. So we're going to work through how to systematically name this in exactly the same way. Firstly, identify the longest chain of carbon atoms, and that's our parent chain. So again, we'll work our way from left to right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbon atoms long. Five carbon atoms, we use a prefix pent, and because it's an alkane, it's pentane. The second rule, we want to identify alkyl groups. So we can see we've got a CH3 here, a CH3 here. Uh, both of these are methyl groups. Third rule, we want to assign these the lowest possible number. We have two groups, so what we do is we look at adding these numbers together and finding out what gives us the lowest sum of numbers. And you should be able to work out that from here. What will give us the lowest sum of numbers is by numbering it from left to right. This tells us we've got a, a methyl group on carbon 2 and a methyl group on carbon 3. So to indicate that, we're going to put the numbers first. So 2, and then to separate the numbers we use commas. So 2, comma 3. To show that there are these two methyl groups, we use the prefix di, so it's a 2,3-dimethyl pentane. For the next rule, so rule number five, if there are two or more different alkyl groups, then we need to name them in alphabetical order. But a key thing is that we just ignore any of those prefixes, like the di and the tri, um, whenever we have any multiple alkyl groups. For example three, we're going to work through this again in very much the same way. So we've got a hydrocarbon with five carbon atoms in the longest chain. It's going to be called a pentane. The second rule is to identify the alkyl groups. So we have a methyl group here 
And we also have an ethyl group here made up of two carbon atoms. Before we can include this in the name, we need to know what carbon atoms they're positioned on. So we need to number these carbon atoms so that these groups get the lowest possible number. We can number them 1 through to 5 from left to right or from right to left. Hopefully you can see that you're going to get a lower sum of numbers if you number from left to right. So when we name this particular compound, remember name the ethyl group first. We need to indicate it's on carbon 3, so it is 3-ethyl. And this methyl group is on carbon 2. So the complete name is 3-ethyl, 2-methyl pentane. Again, just don't forget where you need to place those hyphens, um, so between uh, any numbers and letters. So one more similar example, we're going to look at systematically naming this compound. The first rule is to work out the longest chain of carbon atoms. And you may have thought that the longest chain is four carbon atoms because we can just go from left to right in that way. But it's actually not. I tricked you guys. Um, it's actually five carbon atoms long. So if we have a look at the carbons going from left to right here, and then we just work our way down. So we've got, again, five carbon atoms in the longest chain. So this is going to be a pentane. Let's identify our alkyl groups now. So we have a methyl group here, one over here, and this last carbon on the right actually is simply just another methyl group. Let's number these carbons so that these groups uh, have the lowest possible number. So we're going to get that by numbering in this way. So starting from the left side um, and then working our way down, this should give us the lowest uh, sum of numbers. That tells us we've got a methyl group on carbon 2, and we've actually got two methyl groups on carbon 3. So when we want to write its name, let's put exactly which carbon atoms each methyl group's on. We've got one on carbon 2, one on 3, another one on 3. And because there's three methyl groups, it's going to be called a trimethyl pentane. So that's the systematic name for this particular compound. Just uh, as, a, as a note, be a little bit careful. Remember that the first step is the most important. We need to work out what the longest chain of carbon atoms is. And so you should be able to trace with your finger or your pen going from one end of the molecule straight to the other end and get the maximum number of carbon atoms in that chain.